does a prolonged conflict actually benefit Ukraine? Oh, here's a good question. Okay. Biden is preparing a 33 billion aid plan. So it seems like he, the, the aid will keep coming while the Russian economy will be taking more and more damage as the conflict goes on. Okay. All right. So, oh my God, I have such a controversial take on this. I don't know if the world is ready. Oh my God. I might get destroyed for this. This is going to be one of my most controversial takes. Okay, so a lot of people think that Ukraine should just submit and not fight because it would be better to end this war rather than resist, right? Because Ukrainian people are suffering and Russian people are suffering. And even though this was an unjust war, why make it even worse? There's no way this war will end until one side stops resisting. And it's not if it's not going to be the Russian side, it might be the Ukrainian side, okay? Like constantly aiding Ukraine and making it more capable to defend itself is going to make more Ukrainians suffer. So that's the line of reasoning, okay? And I'm not saying if that's true or not, but what I am going to say, which is going to get me in trouble, is that even though that is true, even though if if that is true, we might have to... In the world, it might have to, it might be in within the best interests of the world for Russia to pay a bigger price. So, even oh my god, I, I'm hearing myself say this, and I know this sounds really bad, but I'm just thinking long term about this, okay? So, even if a longer war is bad for the ukrainian people it's gonna you is gonna make more ukrainian people suffer and die the long-term effects of this might be make it within the best interest of the planet the consequences of taking an action like putin did has to be significant even if it comes at the cost of what I just mentioned. I just don't want to put that in words because it just sounds so insensitive. When you challenge the official recognized, officially recognized borders, the internationally recognized borders of a country, it has we have to set a precedent that you the consequences are so dire for other people. So if you think like what's happening to the Ukrainian people is bad, you want to make sure that other countries don't repeat the same mistake. So Russia needs to pay a big price. So if that means that Ukraine will continue to resist and the war continues and take it takes down the Russian economy, with it so that it's incapable of doing something like this again and other countries take note then then the the benefit might outweigh the cost anyways let me see how you're crucified if anybody is like so secular saying saying never surrender So AB saying, no, I don't agree with it. Horrible take. Bobo, I will start your question to answer it later. So Oxymoron saying, actually, I used to think uh, like that because I didn't expect Russia to fall so quickly. But if there is hope for winning, maybe Ukraine, it should, maybe it should. Oh, but if there's. I think you mean there's no hope for winning. Maybe Ukraine shouldn't. Oh, maybe. Oh, if there's hope for winning, maybe Ukraine shouldn't stop. There's an extra it there that made it hard to read. Okay, but what I'm saying is that even even if there's no hope for Ukraine to win, Ukraine should not stop to increase the cost that Russia pays 
for daring to do such a thing. Blank Dame is saying, but we can't sacrifice Ukrainian for world peace. People can't be treated as me, mere means to our end. Um, you say it like that. I say it based on a utilitarian calculation. And I say, first of all, you're not using them. They are deciding. So it's not like anybody is pushing them to do something they want. They don't want. They are already deciding to do so, and you're just providing the means for them to do so. Your argument here would be true if they were being pushed into something against their will. And if that was the case, I would be against it, again, from a utilitarian perspective, because in that case, the the... First of all, it's not true. The, uh, the ends always justify the means if the, in, if the end is more benefits than costs. So when people say the means don't justify the end, that is wrong. It does. Okay? Uh, so, sorry, the ends don't justify the means. That's, that's wrong. If the end is good, the means are justified. But if you were forced, if you were using people the way that Blank Dame is mentioning, the end would be bad because you were setting a precedent where people were being used against their will to do something that they don't want. And that, that precedent would normalize something and that it would increase the cost of what you're doing significantly. And the normalization of that would be horrible. But that's not what's happening here. They're going to this war and, pretend, and protecting their land willingly. This is not about Ukraine alone. This is about fighting for the values that have made this planet a better place. This is about fighting for democracy. This is the team democracy versus team tyranny. And the consequences of this is beyond Russia and Ukraine. This is also about fighting for the recognition of the world liberal order that has made the world a much more peaceful place ever since World War II. And screwing with that has major consequences be beyond the people of Ukraine, way beyond the people of Ukraine. And anybody who challenges that has to pay a huge price or else world peace, the entirety of world peace is at risk. I don't know if you understand the consequences of risking the order that the world has managed to come up with after World War II. Anybody who dares challenge it has to be crushed by all means necessary. Blank name is saying they should go back to negotiation with more arms and military power from US. That is their decision to make. And if they make the decision to keep fighting, then they should be supported for with that. And I hope that they do, okay? I hope they make Russia pay a bigger price. Again, when I say Russia, I am saying Russia, unfortunately. I'm not saying Putin, okay? It's unfortunate that innocent Russian people also have to pay the price, but they have to pay the price because of the long-term effects of this. So they don't, the Russian people don't deserve this, but this is about protecting their world, not just Russia or Ukraine. Saying we are, we are encouraging it. Yes, but you're not forcing it. That's a major difference. Okay, so we have YouTube members. You guys are deciding to post your questions here instead of coming. So I, I, by the way, uh, Mir Jalal and other members, if you want to ask your questions uh, live on air, you could do that. But I see you're posting your questions here. Um, so I'm going to highlight them. Secular Sakai is saying, I hear what you're saying, but permission isn't good. For what? Oh, pessimism isn't good for morale. 
they have a real chance at winning just no guarantees morale is crucial in their situation okay well i'm not it's not like they're going to hear what i'm saying like they have obviously they have much more of a chance that we thought they do right but still the odds are against them but they still have a chance obviously they have a chance but i'm saying even if the chance was zero just for the mere even if the chat like we now know that the russia can't take you but even if they could even it the the putting putting up a fight was necessary So say bread of life is saying armin if torturing one baby helps save 200 people does that and justify the means so see this is why you need to understand how utilitarian calculation works normalizing or accepting torturing babies have consequences beyond the lives of those 200 ba the 200 people so if you say yes to that you are normalizing the acceptance of torturing 200 babies and a society who, that accepts that will pay a cost beyond the lives of those 200 people. The mere fact that people use this, these examples as an argument against utilitarian calculations show that utilitarian calculations work because most people will be shocked and not accept torturing one baby for the lives of 200 people. That means based on people's cost analysis, they will value a society that doesn't allow torturing a baby. So the negative, the negative utility that people will get from knowing that this is a society that accepts torturing to a baby, the the misery from accepting that the sadness that comes from accepting that is so high that a utilitarian calculation would not allow that the mere fact that people use that as an example the disgust associated with that shows that not only it doesn't work against a utilitarian calculation it shows that a utilitarian calculations would not wouldn't allow that because people are so hateful towards anybody who accepts that do you understand what I'm saying? <clears throat> oh, yeah. You're so you're saying thanks for answering my question. Yeah, no, no worries. You're welcome. So whenever you allow something from a utilitarian perspective, you can't just think about the immediate effects of that. You have to also think about the costs of a society that allows such a thing the consequences of a society that just accepts that as something that is allowable. Atheist Republic needs your help. We have been the target of many legal attacks by Hindu nationalists ever since our founder, Armin Avabi, blasphemed against Hindu deities. We have retained legal counsel to help us defend our access to our community in India. We have started a fundraiser that will help us afford to tackle many legal issues, including judicial harassment and censorship. Whatever you can contribute will go a long ways in helping us in this fight. Link in the description below.